Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again, and welcome to The Roads with Bo. Today is January 7th, 2024, and this is episode 20 of The Roads Not Taken, which is a weekly series where we go through the previous week's events and talk about news that was unreported, underreported, didn't get the coverage I think it should, or I just find it interesting. Uh, after that, we go through some questions from y'all. And this week is a little bit different because a lot of this is news that broke later in the week, and there may be follow-up videos on it over on the other channel. Okay, so starting off with foreign policy. Iraq is hinting that it may ask the U.S. to leave, um, may ask for a withdrawal of U.S. troops, because the U.S. installations there were getting hit by Iranian-backed militias, and the U.S. responded. Iraq has been pretty clear that they're, they need to be the people to respond. And in a statement, they said, we have repeatedly emphasized that in the event of a violation or transgression by any Iraqi party, or if Iraqi law is violated, the Iraqi government is the only party that has the right to follow up on the merits of these violations. This, we don't know if it's actually going to move to a request for the U.S. to withdraw, but they're mad. They are mad. Uh, China's spy balloons are back in the news, this time over Taiwan, and it is prompting outrage on the island. The Biden administration seems to believe that Israel plans on running low-intensity operations through at least the rest of 2024. Moving on to U.S. news, Trump might uh, once again be engaging in a little bit of dog whistling to encourage his base to engage in some bad activity when talking about the Supreme Court case. I just hope we get fair treatment, because if we don't, our country's in big, big trouble. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, Trump, I don't. Why don't you spell it out for us? What exactly are you saying? Uh, in the Georgia case involving Trump, the judge seems unimpressed with Giuliani's attempts to maybe delay because that is how it kind of seems. Um, Giuliani was talking about how the discovery process was going and basically trying to get more time. The judge said, while defendant claims to have filed many, and many is in quotes, motions concerning discovery, none appear on the docket. Not something that a judge likes. Uh, there is a lawsuit moving forward over the death of Miss Babbitt at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, it's worth remembering that these kinds of lawsuits are, they hinge on what policy allows. I feel like the supporters of this lawsuit are going to be in for a disappointment. Um, Given the situation at hand and the fact that the VP was there, the policies are, they allow for a lot of latitude. Okay. Um, three fugitives were arrested on January 6th this year for allegations stemming from the January 6th thing at the Capitol. Uh, Harry Dunn, one of the cops who protected congressional staff on January 6th, has announced he's going to be running for Congress in Maryland. He's uh, running in a really, really blue district where the incumbent is retiring. Um, Trump has, I mean, basically stopped even sending thoughts and prayers when discussing an incident at a school. He said, it's just horrible. So surprising to see it here, but we have to get over it. We have to move forward. The Secretary of Defense was hospitalized after complications from surgery. The fact that he was undergoing surgery wasn't released and put out the way it normally was. There are a lot of people who are trying to kind of manufacture a outrage or a scandal over this. There will definitely be a follow-up video on this one. 
short version, unless you are somebody who is involved with the communications between the Pentagon and the White House, or you are a reporter who covers the Pentagon, you don't have any reason to be mad. Um, in cultural news, Steamboat Willie has uh, entered the public domain. Uh, I feel, based on some of the things I've already seen people doing, uh, I feel like it's worth reminding everybody that just because one version of Mickey has entered the public domain, that does not mean that all versions have, and nobody wants to mess with Disney's lawyers. So be be very aware of what you're allowed to do and what you're not. Um, Kennedy uh, was engaging in a fundraiser, and in the advertisement for it, said a number of celebrities were going to be there. Some people took it as uh, like an implied endorsement. I really don't see that in his statement, um, in the in the team statement about it, but it, it was taken that way by some. Either way, the celebrities in question. <laughs> who were listed, many of them came out to, well, uh, Dion Warwick said, I don't know anything about this event. I did not agree to it, and I certainly won't be there. This is absolutely ridiculous. If you're going to lie on my name, at least lie about something cool. Revealed, Dion collaborates with Rihanna on new album. Uh, Martin Sheen said, I wholeheartedly support President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket in 2024. My early read on this is that his team talked to the celebrities like agents and invited them. Maybe the agents said yes, but didn't pass it on to their client, that kind of thing. I don't think that this was actually deceitful, but I do think that it's going to uh, cause issues for him. In environmental news, satellite observations have led to the discovery that the east coast of the United States is sinking. The rate varies in area, um, but it varies from about 2 millimeters to 5 millimeters per year. 5 millimeters per year is about an inch every five years. Um, with things sinking to include infrastructure designed to stop sea levels from rising, that, that's going to complicate things. In oddities, Russia is now offering citizenship to foreign fighters. Let's see. Aliens were claimed to have been seen at a mall in Miami. Um, I will tell you, it was people walking, their shadows mixed with lights from a collection of cop cars who were there because it was reported to be an active situation, but it was actually people throwing fireworks at each other. It caused a whole lot of panic. Um, a man uh, stripped down in a Bass Pro Shop and did a cannonball into the aquarium. Roll Tide. Okay, so <laughs> moving on, looks like moving on to the questions here. We have, of course, we're starting off with a note from from the team. Say the email address, question for Bo at gmail.com. And it's question for F O R Bo B E A U. Um then tell everybody you don't use Telegram. The scammer is back. Okay, so that's occurring again. Yeah, I don't use Telegram. I will never ask you to go to another platform. Um, and, and we we don't do, like, giveaways in the comment section. Don't give your personal information. I will never ask you for your personal information. Let's just do it that way. Um, okay. On to the questions. With all the talk about plagiarism concerning Harvard and then the wife of the person who attacked Harvard, I was wondering what you think about the people who rip off your videos. <laughs> I don't view it as them ripping them off. I view it as them repurposing them and trying to get them to a different audience. I, I don't... 
I, I don't get mad about it. Um, I, I want the information to get out. Uh, I know that there was somebody on TikTok who basically kind of just redid an entire video. And I had a whole bunch of people send it to me. Honestly, it, it yeah, it does look like they used, you know, my videos as source material. But they repackaged that to get to an audience that would never watch me. So I, I don't I don't have an issue with it. Um you know, if it is if it's with good intent trying to help, I yeah. It it doesn't upset me. Why do the Russians keep trying to go through that path in the forest in Kharkiv? It's the seventh time and they keep being destroyed. It kind of seems like staged Ukrainian propaganda. Oh, because, it, they, because they just keep getting demolished. No. Um, think back to early on, one of the first videos about it. It's... There are only so many ways to get from point A to point B. And that's especially true if you're talking about moving armor. For those that don't know, there's a forest near Kharkiv. And uh, the Russians have been trying to get through it. There aren't a lot of paths to move something the size of a tank through. So, of course, the Ukrainians are on those paths. And the Russians are not having... A lot of success moving through those areas and there's a lot of videos and footage coming out about it okay we have another note make sure you read the next two questions together before answering your coverage of gaza reveals you to be an israeli stooge <laughs> answer for the audience if you're a jew or not and then a word that starts with F, and then another word that rhymes with bike. Okay. The next one, why do you keep saying Israel is making mistakes? You aren't here. We are surrounded. Your support of these inhuman pieces of is deplorable. Muslim loving and then it goes on from there. <laughs> I mean, I get why these two questions are paired that way. Look, when it comes to this topic from, like I said from the beginning, I'm covering the foreign policy aspects of it, the military strategy aspects of it. That's what I'm covering. Um, there is a ton of coverage out there that will appeal to your emotion. There is a ton of coverage out there that will confirm whatever it is that you want to believe. Um, that's not what I'm doing here. That's not what I'm going to do. I think it is incredibly important for people to understand the dynamics, the rhetoric that has been used for the last 50 years. It is, is what perpetuates the cycle going. I think it's incredibly important for people to understand the the actual dynamics of the conflict. Um, there, there is no shortage of information that will that will appeal to your side, whatever your side is. Um, so, okay. You, you, and then there's two other YouTubers named, have all referenced the Powell Doctrine. But when I look it up, it doesn't seem to relate. Am I, mis <laughs> Am I misunderstanding what you, are all, what you are all saying? No, there are two Powell Doctrines. The Powell Doctrine that you are going to find when you look this up is going to be a series of questions um, that... A nation should ask before it engages in military action. That is the journalist-created PAL doctrine. 
the the Powell Doctrine in slang is let's see, a good definition. A fast operation designed to degrade the opposition's warfighting capability and then a hasty withdrawal. Desert Storm is the Powell Doctrine. Show up, destroy the warfighting capability, and leave. No occupation, no nation building, nothing like that. Destroy their ability to engage in war and then get out. Um, how do you feel about Ukraine's draft? I, I do not support drafts. That 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 is that's an across the board thing. Even for causes I support or you know, a, a country that's in a conflict that I'm sympathetic to. I, I do not support drafts, period. There, there's no but or however in that. I've seen a few people on the far left call Biden names and say flat out that Americans deserve a second Trump term so they sympathize with Palestinians. Wouldn't Palestinians be worse off under a second Trump term? Well, I mean, it would depend on what happens in that term. They would be worse off if he was in power right now. Um, yeah, so this is going to mostly be younger people on the far left. And I think it is incredibly important for us to remember they haven't seen anything like this before. They're, they're not desensitized to it. it. It's different. Seeing something like this in real time and knowing that it's happening right now is different than seeing it in a history book. If you're my age, okay, um, probably weren't aware of Grenada too young, but... You saw the famines and were aware of that. Saw the footage. Um, Panama, Bosnia, Rwanda. This is all before you get to Iraq 1. We were very desensitized to large-scale military operations and the footage that accompanies it. They haven't seen it before, and they're mad. Um, so I, I don't think some of the things they're calling him are necessarily fair. But maybe we should have been more angry in the past. Um, I, I, I don't believe that Americans would learn their lesson if Trump got a second term. Um, but at the same time, I, I can't be. I can't be upset about the way they're reacting. They're reacting the way they are because they're angry. Um, and, and again, it's it is new. You know, there there's there is a big difference between knowing it's happening right now and something you you saw in the History Channel or you read in a book. Um, I think a lot of them, a lot of them believe that if they, if they just get out there and march long enough, that it'll stop. Or something along those lines. Um, but direct answer to the question, wouldn't Palestinians be worse off under a second tr Trump term? There is nothing Trump would do to try to restrain e or even encourage restraint. Um, yeah. If, if, these, if a similar situation arose under Trump, it, it would be worse. Yes. 
do you feel you have a good sense for how people will react or understand your videos, especially the produced ones on the roads? I wonder if simply publishing without having them reviewed or proofread might end up missing things. Um, you know, I've been accused of many things. Being inarticulate isn't one of them. Now, um, I, I like to think that I make my point pretty clear. Um, if I don't, then I mean I don't. It, I, how people react to the videos or the information that's put out, there's not a lot I can do about that. And as as we saw earlier, you you can have you can have people respond in polar opposite ways to the same information and assume that you're trying to do something else. Um, I, uh, I haven't given this a whole lot of thought. I haven't, I don't feel like I've been misunderstood a lot. There have been times when it's happened, but it's relatively, relatively rare. Let's see those Katie Porter style whiteboards documenting Trump's trial. Please and thank you. Ah, uh, no, can't do that. I I write a lot of my uh, suspicions down on those. And for those that don't know, I keep track of different events on whiteboards. And uh, I, I mentioned recently that I have one that a big one <laughs> that I use to keep track of Trump's legal entanglements. There are things written on them that I can't prove. So I can't show them. <laughs> like it's, it's um, who I believe may have already taken a deal. Um, stuff like that. And I, uh, yeah, I don't want to show any of that until it's confirmed. So, okay. So that looks like it. Those are all the questions. Um, yeah. So a little bit more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day.